Hello, welcome back to the uh, Join the Cult podcast. It's episode six, and uh, I know it's been a lot of time since we were uh, here the last time. But uh, as you can hear today, we actually have our first English episode. We were promising that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Like we were promising that for like like months and months to finally do an English episode, and we got some people asking uh, for it as well. And today, there's a reason why we do that. Uh, maybe we should talk about first why it's been so long since last time. Yeah. Our, our pledge when we started this so shit here was like to do this every month, like mm. to have a really regular thing going. But there was so much going on. We played some concerts now uh, and uh, we started like pre-production or we finishing the pre-production of our uh, upcoming album and a lot of stuff happened. At least you got some videos, uh, like some live videos, uh, if you subscribe to this channel and uh, you got, uh, what did, else did we do, like behind the scenes episodes. Yeah, the scene stuff, yeah. So there was a lot of stuff going on, but the podcast had like a little creative pause, let's say. <laughs> um, yeah, why are we talking English? Because Zach is here. Uh, Zach Ansley, everybody. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. He's a, a vocal coach and he's actually my vocal coach. <laughs> yep. I found him through his YouTube channel. He's an amazing uh, vocal, how do you say, like vocal critique? Uh, critic, yeah. Critic, critic. Analyst. Uh, analyst, yeah, let's say analyst, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I actually uh, know him through his YouTube channel. I was watching his videos and it's like you can binge watch. It's a lot of amazing analysis videos about uh, different singers. And um, yeah, and that's why uh, I got in touch with him because I was looking for a vocal coach uh, to have like with a lot because I had a lot of bad habits uh, in the past as a, as a singer. And so I got in touch with him. And uh, since then, yeah. He, uh, he's my teacher, and uh, so why are you here today, Zach? Today? <laughs> well, um, I'm here because... Uh, why are you even in Germany? That Maybe you should... Uh, well, uh, I moved to Europe. And you so, moved to Europe, yeah. And uh, so the uh, big change, but part of the, the benefits of being here is that a lot of my students are in Europe mm, in various yeah. places, and I have a, a, a big mass of students in Germany. So um, I'm here because... Your band, Blossom Cult, had a concert, had a show, yeah. and so I uh, wanted to come see it. Of course, I, I, lo I love supporting my students and everything that they do. I mean, that's part of being that's, a teacher. That's, 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 like the, that's like the culmination of your work, right? You know, teaching isn't about what you do, it's what your students create. So yeah. it's, like the, it's like the payoff for me. To, to see, to see the, what yeah. you taught you, to yeah, see the, that in action. So yeah, to, to see the result of what, you know, what your work with your students has done. And so, you know, of course, and I've always... Uh, I always had I had a great voice teacher in college who supported me in the same way, and anytime his students would have anything, he'd go support them for it. So that's yeah, just that's my role. Cool. Yeah, that's my role. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, it was amazing because we like uh, before the gig, uh, um, we made like some some warm up uh, practices already here. Yeah. He uh, he he's really strict with me. Like he uh, he uh, forbid me to like drink. I usually have like a habit before a concert. I drink like one or two beers to loosen up. I tell myself that I need that. Turns out I don't need it. It's just like a habit that I had. But he said like it's bad for the voice. Don't drink uh, beer before. Don't smoke cigarettes, which I shouldn't do anyway because it sucks. As we all know, <laughs> yeah. um, it's bad in general. Don't yeah, and, and don't even drink like like coke and a lot of stuff. And that helped so much. Like of, together with the warm ups. But that gig yesterday, no, the day before yesterday. Yeah, the day before yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Felt my voice felt great, and uh, yeah, you, I. It's a big benefit to have him as a vocal coach, and it's really nice to have him here um, yes. for the uh, for the podcast. Uh, how how you uh, how have you been? Like I didn't really introduce him, but you all know him. <laughs> I already, you so. know me, you know. <laughs> yeah. no, no, nothing much to say about me. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe it, uh, uh, what I wanted to say about Zach is that if you are on stage and you do your singing stuff and you do a little mistake or something like that, it's always just like, oh my god, what's Zach thinking right yeah. now? <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, because he's always like in the, he's, uh, he, he's always like in the first row, like and he's like completely supportive and he's not not like like judging or anything. But like of course we are like as artists like we are like really self conscious and critical, self critical. And you see him and he, when he did something wrong, exactly what he told you before not to do, yeah. and you're like ah, I put too much strain on that one or whatever. He yeah. told me not to drink yeah. beer before the show. Yeah, that, that's seven. his problem. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, it, you know, I, I think that. Uh, I think that that's 
it, it, when I when I would perform in college and in various places, like I said, my voice teacher would always be there, and it was it was always nice from the perspective of the singer to have someone who knew what you were dealing with, yeah, and, and, and like you know, say to be able to give you that kind of like you know, give them the nod to the head of like give you the eye contact, and be yeah, like, you know, that just just knowing that there's someone there that understands what you're going through, but has also yeah. like knows what to expect. It makes it, for me, it made the performance easier in a sense. It so, definitely so did. Yeah, I, that, I that sounded that like like like, like a negative, but it it wasn't. Uh, a great experience uh, for me to play on set to watch it because it's like a like the the jedi master you know like <laughs> with his padawans like it no it's it's really but it helped me a lot to to also remember because on stage it's always like you when you're in a studio or when you're uh, practicing at home or whatever it's always a different scenario mm. so it's always like it, it feels more a control it's a controlled environment and when you're mm. on stage there's so many factors playing and that you have maybe a shitty sound you, I want. I'm. We are like a band that likes loves to move on stage and mm -hmm. to jump around a lot and stuff like that. And um, so you're also like kind of acting while you sing. Not, maybe not acting, but like yeah, yeah. acting out. Yeah, I it's don't an know. act. The it's show an, an act, act in a yeah. way, but yeah. I also feel it is real. But yeah, yeah. it's, it's you, not you fake. Could say there's more to do at the same time than when you just practice it. Because yeah, and we also play guitars while we sing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a presentation I mean, as much as it is a performance. It's the same yeah. rehearsal room because there also we play guitar, obviously, but True. you don't have yeah. to concentrate on the audience what they are thinking. If you have to do act more, act less, that's uh, some partial yeah. thoughts that go through your mind while you're playing, and so there's a lot more that stuff that goes yeah. on in your in your head, and so there's no m not much space left to think about the scene yeah, so you tend to forget yeah. everything that you the were practicing stuff, before yeah. like okay lo low breath low breath it's yeah. his favorite like low breath and uh um, like not to put the chin up when you go through the high notes or, like little stuff like that it's like habit you build up uh, you build like for years and years before you know so uh yeah. on stage you just tend to forget all this stuff yeah. well you, you know? know they say the whole the phrase I don't, i don't know if you say this in germany the same way but you know practice makes perfect mm. well yeah. that's not true it's not true Perfect practice makes perfect. It's true. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's a good point. That's yeah. The Difference, way yeah. that you practice your what will be your performance is how you will perform. So the reason that you have to be fastidious when you work on things on your own mm. and make sure that you know you don't keep your chin up and that you get the low breath and you get the right mouth shape and all that kind of thing yeah. is so that you can implement the other elements of the performance into what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. like if you need to focus on this difficult guitar part, but you've yeah. got this vocal stuff you're doing at the same time. Well, if you can trust your technique and you know that you don't have to worry about doing that wrong, then you can just do what your body does. Because remember that the voice is an extension of the body. It's a part yeah. of the body. So you can train that. You can't really train a guitar. You can train your body to play the guitar, but you know, you can't train the guitar to act True. on its own. You can kind right. of it's muscle separate memory. entity. So to right. Say. Yeah. Right. You always have to control that instrument, but if you, get the voice in the state to where you can kind of make it to where it's just a part of how you sing yeah. you don't have to think about it as much it frees up mental energy Th that's the, the point in you have front. to reach the point where you don't need to think about it anymore it's yeah. the same like playing fast licks on a guitar you don't think about every fucking note it's just like you play it you yeah the, like the, that i've been <laughs> i've been doing the the low breath thing since i was 17 years old i'm 35 now and i don't even think about it anymore even mm. in my regular like really? speech yeah i just because it's it's such a focused thing that becomes just a part of your routine because it's your body you know you're using your body so the more you do it yeah. humans are habit building creatures totally yeah, yeah. so Completely, you know you yeah. just build those habits and then on stage it comes my out first guitar song. teacher ever told me that <clears throat> don't practice your mistakes if you make a mistake stop and practice it again otherwise right otherwise it will be stuck in your head the fucking mistake yeah. you do okay i have to uh, stop using the f word <laughs> yeah it's it's you know yeah that's a youtube is a beep. you only be as good as your best practice right yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you if you leave leaks in your performance there, you leave technical problems in your singing sure. or whatever, it will show up in it as yeah. inconsistency in your yeah, life. Yeah, I mean so. that that's that's uh, I mean we're like a little bit far off from the topic that I want to talk about, but it's it's fucking interesting. Uh like because we had uh we had those uh talks even if it's not like about vocals, but we were talking about it here in the podcast already before too because uh um, when um, we were talking about like Rick leaving the band and yeah. uh, the whole approach to exercising, you know, and we were having a lot of discussions like when should we be, when should we be ready to perform? Like should that be like two weeks before the concert or should that be like half a year before the concert so that you're already <laughs> like, yep. Yeah, and the, I, I prefer the, the, the letter, like, yeah, because to be half a year before like done and just practicing, practicing, practicing and not to be just like, right on time like to have a deadline like ah oh, it's two weeks so 
now we can more or less play the set and that that's a different approach you know and uh, I think that's so important like to 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 have the base thing going and then just to keep practicing and keep practicing your routines and your uh, yeah everything like and that's uh, so important yeah, yeah. yeah definitely Anyway, uh, now we got like a bit a bit off track. Okay. I knew that would, would, would uh, that would happen, and that's what uh, we always see. It's a nice uh, podcast episode when that happens. Yeah. Um, but we have we also have like a, a little uh, deadline today. Well, I mean, more I, or less. I have to teach a little in a little while. Yeah. You know, so He's I have teaching students, online but, from from here. Yeah, but that's yeah. you know it's okay. I, I, I'm sure I'm sure that the students that that I'm working with today will see this and be like, oh yeah, this is cool. I, you know, this is what Zach was doing. You know, oh, so hopefully, I, I'm, I'm it's okay. I'm I, I mean, we could have gotten up earlier, but. Uh, well, we were out here. Where my voice is today. Please don't judge my voice. Like even talking voice, it's yeah. just all fucked up from yesterday. We were out there. We already screwed up, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the nightlife in this place is. Yeah, Germans. Uh, we know how to drink beer. Let's say, like <laughs> with the mouth. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great place. This is a great place. I, I really like it here. Yeah. Did you even say that you're coming from America? I don't well, think well, I, I mean, said that. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the USA. You um, can hear that probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, my accent, but you could also, you know, my YouTube channel. Uh, most yeah. of my content references where I used to live because I made a lot of the content back then because I kind of took this <coughs> break from doing YouTube for a while and I've recently come back a little bit more. But, um, mm. but you know, I, I was from the USA originally and I've lived there my whole life and I just recently moved to Europe about five months ago. Mm. Yeah, but... Um, what we wanted to talk about today is like the the topic that I thought would be interesting, and that's why you you can see that it's already interesting to have Zach on here in general. But there's one topic that I wanted to talk about also before, and it turns out that Zach is like the perfect guest because he has some experience with that too. And so that's why the the uh, episode here is called Hate. I thought like Hate is a good name. People see it like we are a metal and, band. We need the yeah. word Hate. hate. <laughs> Satan. Satan Hate. Satan Hate. Would have been better. Yeah, it would would have been. The, it's, there it's was a guy at the yet. place last night with a shirt on that said Satan is real. <laughs> That's a creator shirt. Creator oh, it's a creator. creator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I told you about the band. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, those metal guys. We're not even that metal. We're, I am. Uh, he is <laughs> more than any of us, but yeah. Um, yeah, so no, I lost it again. Like, uh, yeah, your experience. Like, uh, we wanted to talk about, like, hate in general. Like, uh, when you're in, um, like, in your personal life, when you when you're uh, um, con um, when you're facing like hate or, or, or naysayers, and you get in discussions, and maybe we talk about, about like the line between criticism and uh, like really bullying or, or stalking or whatever. Mm. Um, but of course, it's also like specifically about being an artist and facing hate. Like because mm -hmm. when you're an artist, like you're uh, exposing yourself, and I'm, I'm counting you as an artist too, like with yeah, your sure. with your YouTube uh, stuff. Um, and also with your teaching, it's also art in a way, you know, so, um, and um, I wanted to talk about how to face criticism, which is difficult too sometimes, even if it's constructive crit criticism, you yeah. know, and because even like, especially when it's about singing, it's so intimate, it's something intimate that you do, or when you sing songs and you wrote them, it's like personal lyrics and they mean a lot to you and then you get criticism, criticism or, or even hate, like it's, it's hard, you know, and I wanted to talk about this. And uh, Zach has a lot of experience with that too, because that's why you actually stopped with your yeah. YouTube channel first. You talked about it like that you had a pause. <clears throat> yeah. So tell us what, what happened. Well, like, it, what was, your experience? it was kind of a combination of the perfect storm of things. Um, it, it's a long, long story, but um, I, al I already was kind of in a, a situation. I was working at a music school and my job was very demanding. Not, not the job itself. Teaching is the greatest thing in the world. I love it. But, but I was having to drive like an hour a day, a day back and forth, uh, to get to work. And I had a very tight schedule and I, I my YouTube channel just, and I've, you, you hear me say this on my channel all the time. My YouTube channel was an accident. I made a video not intending for it to, for anything to happen. And next thing you know, I have hundreds of people wanting me to talk about singing. And so I tried, I built my life around working at this music school and, um, Next thing you know, I've got this YouTube channel that I'm trying to like keep together during whatever spare time I had. And um, so, you know, I made a few mistakes at the beginning. I think I said some things. I, I'm, a, I'm a very like direct and to the point person. Yeah. But, yes. but I, 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 I want people to be that way with me too, you know? So I, I yeah. treat people like that because I you want You do it from a good place. That's we the thing appreciate that. that in Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, we love that here in Germany. Yeah, like, I'm, at least we do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, very, yeah. I'm very direct. And so I think that... You know, the internet is a place uh, where a lot of people try to 
present themselves a certain way and create an image. And I think that yeah. when, and they build their brands and their lives and on fake. that image. True. And so when someone comes in and sort of like tearing down that fourth wall a little bit, mm -hmm. so to speak, I think those people take offense to it. And yeah. so I did that because honestly, when I, when I got online, I saw like when I, my YouTube channel started, I, I just, I didn't think I was, I was that big of a deal. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big deal, but like I, I, I didn't think that what I was saying was anything groundbreaking. Like, I, I mean, cause I went to college for seven years and I just learned about the voice and I learned how the voice works and I learned about the pedagogy and all that kind of stuff. And so I said, you know, this is just things that you learn about the voice. Well, I, then I start looking at the landscape on the, on the internet with vocal instruction and it's crazy how much of the information is just false. false yeah. And, and so, you know, it was, it was a shock to me. And that's when I kind of realized like there needs to be some kind of mm -hmm. like counterbalance to all this tr non-truth stuff. But I did not realize that that falseness was a business. Oh, and, yeah. and so I, I said some things about some people and I made some about comments, vocal, 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 in, vocal instructors. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I did that because I, I, I was just saying like, Hey, we need to set the record straight. Truth is important. Science is important. Physiology yeah. is important because the, like I said a minute ago, the voice is an instrument of the body. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's so important. Like, that's why I'm so happy that I started to have lessons with you because, uh, um, it's, it's something like it's, if you do this wrong, you can harm yourself, like inflict real harm, like physical harm. It's not like when you have a bad guitar technique, mm -hmm. you, you will suck. But but it's not destroying you, you know. It but can be too. But I, yeah, I've heard like tendonitis. Yeah, but not, not like things. overall. Like it's uh, if you destroy your voice, you you can be damaged for life. I mean, it's really hard to do the same with uh, an instrument. It's the risk possible. is lower. The risk say. is a yeah. lot lower. Vocal, and vocal so it's injuries. just important uh, to 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 just state some facts. That, like uh, you told me, like um um like. Uh, Maybe this is also maybe topic for a different uh, podcast. I don't want to talk so much about it, but but it's just 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 one as aspect. Like you uh, told me about like screaming. Sometimes we scream. Also, uh, he's mm -hmm. doing most of the screams at least live, and uh, I'm so happy for it. So that I don't need to do it. Like it can keep my voice. But I'm also doing it sometimes, like also on stage. And um, for me, it was important to to learn that that it's dangerous to do that. No matter what, how good the technique is, and you can uh, watch your breath support, and you can uh, reduce the strain as much as possible, and everything. But it's dangerous to do it, and it's just good to know that, you know. And for me, it helped a lot just to know. Okay, it, it, there is stuff that is dangerous, and he's not saying like uh, you're not supposed to do this, you know. You always support me, like also we coach. He coaches me like because we have the pre-production going on now with the new album or with the with basically our debut album, our full-length debut album. We just have EPs yet. With this band um so he's like coaching me through the through the album at the moment and you're not like telling me i cannot use like uh, what's the name like raspy raspy, raspy harsh, vocals, vocals harsh yeah. vocals. sometimes i want this as a, as a vision you know and so <laughs> it's important just to know that this stuff is dangerous you know and yeah. i think this is something that you just stated it's a fact it's dangerous yeah Point. and it, it's it's like the, people didn't like that it, well but, the the problem is that it's we don't have there, there may be ways to do that kind of thing that isn't dangerous but there's not enough science on that because it. it's a relatively new method of vocalization you know yeah. it just popped up in the past 30 or 40 years it's mm -hmm. like a regular thing that people do and we don't we don't that's if you think about 30 years that's the that's the lifetime of a career like one career so like we don't even have enough time to have enough data points Learn about the long term effects. Right. And so yeah. now, in the past five or 10 years, we've got all these people, oh, you can do heart rash, raspy vocals all you want, blah, blah, blah. How do you know this? Yeah. Like, yeah. Wh where where's the science? And the, and the problem is that the groups that are trying to do the science, I'm not going to give names, but the groups that are trying to do the science on it, when you look at it, it's disingenuous and they'll take points and then use data to represent the point rather than taking the data and making a point. Yeah, it should be like a scientific it's, approach. Right. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, it's a business. It's a business. Mm -hmm. There, there are vocal coaches teaching distorted, safe vocals for literally four and five hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. And and there's even the and I've said this from the beginning. Even the best voice teachers, like in in Atlanta where I'm from, the top flight voice teachers don't charge more than a hundred bucks an hour. Like people who like have 
like PhDs in the subject and you have who have, who have real academic backgrounds don't charge that much. And so when, when you get past a certain point, it's like, are you really learning or are you just spending money to spend time with a celebrity? You know, yeah. and so some, some voodoo costs. You know, so, yeah. th that's funny you say that because my voice teacher called a lot of the stuff vocal voodoo. That's mm -hmm. the exact yeah. word that he used, yeah. was vocal voodoo. And so um, it, it, there's not enough. I wouldn't say regulation is the wrong word, but there's not yeah. enough oversight by the vocal community and warnings right it's just to warn people like i i, I cannot stop to do raspy vocals and harsh vocals because i want to have it sometimes right you know but i need to know what i'm doing is like dangerous and uh yeah sorry i, I think it's really important uh, to uh, point out Be that you, you don't want to tell people not to do it you just want people to be aware on where you can measure yeah. awareness yeah awareness, yeah. Yeah, awareness is probably somehow health awareness yeah. and i think yeah. that's very important because if you are not aware of that stuff uh, like when you're on tour and you do that in, on every show, the raspy vocals, then on the end of the tour, your damage, your vocals will be Well, here's the thing. I've heard voice teachers on the internet say things like, oh, when you're doing this stuff, you're going to feel a little bit of a burn, but like, oh, that's going right. to yeah. go away if you keep doing <laughs> yeah. it. You, that's you not taste good. a little bit of blood. <laughs> if that's yeah, that's fine. Not right good. ahead, bullshit alert. Yeah. Pain is okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it that's the pain is your body telling you to yeah. stop. Yeah. yeah. And they, I, I remember, like, like uh, back in the day, we it's like uh, we had. I, I mean, this is the Blossom Cut podcast, so I, I'm just talking that people don't know. But like, uh, we had like bands before, and like in the in the band before that we had before, like I told you yesterday, like we uh, one of the tours that we did, like we were playing like two two weeks in a row, and like the last uh, two days, my voice was like gone, like because mm. I didn't know how to do it right, you know, and so my voice was gone, and my whole falsetto range, like the. Ah! that was just gone i couldn't do it anymore and for those and that's for dangerous those, for the people yeah. out there the just a quick thing if you ever try to make a head voice sound whoo, and you can't like he's like uh, that is and a something sign. is wrong that's yeah. that's that's one of the muscles that controls the vocal mechanism not functioning properly and the folds aren't closing so if you ever feel like you're in bad shape and you try to make a falsetto sound you can't you need to go on vocal rest. You need to not sing because that's a sign that something and is very wrong. And I was still wrong. singing the two actually, concerts then. Yeah. Actually, I didn't know that, but it's the first thing I check when I d I'm not sure if my voice is okay or not, I do that. Oh, just if my head voice is there. If it's, it isn't there or it feels hard to do the to hit the note, that's then I know problem. something is fucked up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you should rest. I didn't know, but that's also uh, every time I check, I check it. That it's way. probably like an intuitive uh, thing. That yeah, you have, thing, like yeah. A, maybe uh, it's the yeah. first thing that occurs if I know my voice isn't um, that right. But just just to go back to the topic, like of the the hate and the yeah. haters, like what happens? Like you, you, well, you yeah. it, it's it's ironic that that. Well, I mean, I've gotten hate on my videos. I was showing him comments on my YouTube channel to, from today. Yeah. Like so, some I are like hate. harsh criticisms. Like it's like a, I wouldn't call all of it hate. Like well, some is like some bad of criticism. Like, well, like like today, I got comments that were like, "You don't know anything. You're not a millionaire. You're a nobody. You're sitting in your room doing nothing. You know, like go. You're critiquing all these people because you're jealous and." You know, but the thing I is, <clears throat> like, it, the thing is, I, I would, if, if any, if any of these performers, Brandon Yuri or Jeff Tate or whoever came to me, I don't care how famous they are. I'm going to teach them the same way. I have a relatively famous student and I, uh, he told me that when I first, <laughs> he told me that when I first started working with him, it was a big hit to his ego because yeah. he was used to people being like, you know, like he wasn't used to people like. You know, coming down on him, so yeah. he had to think about it a long time. But it's not because I'm trying to be better than anybody, and it's not because yeah. I'm trying to act. It's because this is this is you care. I studied yeah. this. You yeah. wouldn't go to a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not calling myself a doctor, but just using that for an, as an example, an expert, or a, a relative expert in a subject, and say like, I came to you for help. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. Like you you wouldn't do that. So you know why would a why would a vocal teacher be under that same degree of scrutiny? So I get hate in the sense of like people. That I guess don't understand that I'm trying to be educational. A lot of these vocal teachers on the internet are trying to be entertaining and not educating. So when they see an educator next to an entertainer, I look like a like I'm stuck up. Like yeah. I've been called the Simon Cowell of We're YouTube several times. Yeah, Spisa. Spisa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been called the Simon Cowell of YouTube a few times. Like you know, just critical of people for just for the hell of it. But that's not that's not it. Anyway, it's ironic because the the pinnacle of this hate came from someone who actually is, a, is an opera singer. Uh, and I, I'm a classically trained singer. I sing opera. And um, the someone just decided that I was in their crosshairs, that they did not like the way I did things. They did not like my method of teaching. Uh, and they did not like that I did not show myself singing enough on the internet, which I have, by the way. I do have videos of myself singing on the internet all over the place, actually. There are a lot of um, vocal t-shirts <clears throat> who don't have 
videos of themselves singing on and, that. Yeah, and, and another thing is that I don't, when I do a, a recording of myself singing, I do it there and that's it. Like, I don't process it. I don't yeah, put it through. It's just like, like, with them, like, yeah. like, because that, you know, it gets to the point, and I've seen it where there are certain voice teachers, like really famous ones, that have videos themselves singing as a demonstration that they can do it, and it's completely auto tuned, completely yeah. pitch corrected. I, I heard that. It, it, and and yeah. it's, it's, that is disingenuous. And that same person charges $400 an hour for voice lessons. Hmm. Right. So I would rather look imperfect in a recording so that my students can see, like, I'm a human too. Yeah. You know, teaching voice is a very human thing. Yeah. But right? the problem is the internet. If you do that, right. you, you show uh, fra fragility, fra 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 fragility or weakness. Fragility. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the reason why we do this podcast too. That, that was the whole point because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of like, like that fake, like everybody's like on TikTok and Instagram and showing like, like, That, and also that I told you before the reason for the podcast is also like to break with this whole outdated rock star thing like uh, mm. oh, we are the band and you're the audience you know like uh, I think it's the, this time it's just past uh, and the problem is like if you if you just show yourself like with every bullshit you know, you know and, and you're with your flaws and everything I think people can relate much better um, yeah. on the one hand but on the other hand you will have those people coming in who, who compare you to like the the Fake perfection. Uh, and that uh, happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. And I tell everybody, I've told you this, I tell all, everybody this, we're all as voice students. I'm still a student of the voice. We're all on the same road. We just are on different places of the road. So like people try to skip the line in the road by making themselves look less real than they actually are. Mm -hmm. And and so you you see that and it makes this paradigm on the internet to where the people who can do the perfect covers of the singer are the better voice teachers and that's not realistic I, my voice teacher made tons of mistakes he was terrible at piano i'm terrible at piano too but he was he'd uh, do warm-ups uh, and stuff and he was terrible at piano he'd admit it like and and he'd make mistakes when he teach me songs you know and we i work on literature with him that's part of the process you know it's not it's not about being perfect because there is no perfect and so there's a person on the internet who put me in his crosshairs because he just did not like my approach and He found where I worked. Um, he put first. He put me in a situation to where he said he he dragged me into this group full of voice teach internet voice teachers, <laughs> and 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 uh, said you're gonna you know you want to criticize people so much you want to act like you're better than everybody so much. Well, you're going to sing for us today, and it was first off it was like three in the morning, and at the time I was living with my grandmother, and the way that our town home was set up was like. My room was here, and I had a wall connected to her here. And if you've ever heard me sing, I have a it's very loud, loud voice. Yeah, and loud. so, first off, I was not going to sing and wake my grandmother up at three in the morning. Second off, I'm not going to be blackmailed by somebody. The guy yeah. said he was going to get me fired from my job if I did not if I did not sing Proof. something. Yeah, yeah. If, if I could not prove to him that I was I could sing, and I didn't do it. And sure enough, the next day I wake up to a text message from my boss with screenshots that said, "What is going on?" And so what had happened is this person had found where I'd worked and review bombed my the place of work, school. the music yeah, school yeah. I worked for all over the internet. And, um, I, uh, I got called into work early and I talked to my boss and she said, she, we, she sat down in the office with me and she said, Zach, I'm really happy for you that you're building something with this YouTube thing. I think you're doing a great thing. I think that it's something that's, you know, been really beneficial for you and for other people. But she said, I can't have your business hurting my business. Which is and, understand uh, yeah, understandable. And too. Yeah, it is. I, I never faulted her. I mean, if you're seeing this, Cecilia, I think you're great. And I've never, I've never fault you for any of yeah, this. What can she do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, the, it, it, from that point on, I kind of, I took a back seat at my own job. You know, I, I, they, they took me off all the signage. They like, we used to have things where we take pictures with our students that I, I was invisible. I still worked there, but I was invisible. And eventually when COVID hit, I had built up enough students privately to where I could break off from there. And the drive was really difficult. And then with all the COVID restrictions coming in, they were having us teach online as well through zoom anyway, and, yeah. and conflicting with my work schedule, like private, it was too hard. So I stopped working there. But yeah, what this amounts to is that this hate, this this person who, you know, came after me, basically, very deeply negatively affected my life. There was a point there after when I when I stopped with the studio that I was having to drive Lyft in addition to teaching, you know, and I went I didn't go to school to drive Lyft, you know, and I had to do that because things got so out of whack and so imbalanced and so uh, so difficult that I had to, I had to change my entire plan. And I took a really long break from YouTube because I, I said, I don't want, 
I don't want this exposure anymore. I'm not the kind of person he can vouch for this. I'm not a very like spotlight kind of person. No, I mean, I can all. do this, you know, because I'm in an environment. Well, you told me you you would never be a, like a front man in a band. It's or, not or, who I am, and and that it took me a while to get adjusted to YouTube. Like like the, I think like I had this thing in my head, right? Like who could like how can you want everyone to look at your face without being some kind of a narcissist? Yeah, and so yeah, like you I know, and and, it, yeah. and so like I I had to reconcile with that. And make YouTube videos and tell myself, like, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for the people who watch it. And that's how I, like, would tell myself I'm not a narcissist. I'm not just doing this for attention. You know, and so I've it's been a struggle for me from the beginning for myself just to think that I'm that important that people need to hear what I have to say. I'm like, I'm not some savior, you know. So mm -hmm. when, when I see these things on the Internet, when I, you know, all the hate, it, it, it was already a struggle for me, a really mm -hmm. big struggle. And so um, it was... It, it put me down for a while. I, I left it off for a while because of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you you can see that how how hate and uh, can affect somebody's life. Like this is like a drastic example, you know. Like like that's a horror story that what happened. You know, he's like a but that guy's also let's face it, he's like a little crazy. You know, yeah. like to stalk somebody like. But the, people like this exist, and they, it's a problem if you're like on the internet <clears throat> and you're exposing uh, yourself to. Everybody, if you're in the, on the internet and have a YouTube channel, you do that. But also, if you if you create songs, you do that. Like that's why, um, for me, it's also like a question. Like, um, you know that we did like some uh, like the, the EP that we did before the our latest EP. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a, a concept how we were dealing with the COVID crisis, mm -hmm. and uh, it's like really critical towards like government measurements and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and we, for example, we recorded a, uh, we, um, published a video called state of mass, mm -hmm. which is not a, again, we talked about it here. It's not a statement for or against masks or something like that. It's just to deal with the situation that everybody's covering their face and like to deal with that whole, uh, situation, situation as an artist, you know, to, mm -hmm. to process it emotionally. Um, but of course, if you do something like that, you know, that they, that people will sometimes maybe, uh, intentionally misunderstand you and read things in there uh, that are not really there you know yep. and there nothing really happened we got i think one comment to yeah one or two or something yeah like one or two one was deleted by the person itself later on true but, yeah. yeah and some some people said like ah you're uh i don't know the word in english like we're like almost like conspiracy theorist stuff like which we are not you know but people say this and then it's okay i can live with that if i if i know that i'm if i'm preparing myself emotionally and mentally like like We're putting something out that's maybe like a, a um, maybe will rise, uh, arouse some uh, uh, like some conflict or some mm -hmm. discussion. It's like a brave statement or whatever. Then then I know that you 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 can prepare for pre 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 prepare for it. You know, but there's other stuff like uh, where there's a, like, I told you there's a line between like hate and like criticism, like con yeah. uh, and and it's. But everything is loud. Like just to name one example, mm. remember high out of flying. Mm. You know, uh, uh, it seems like an example that I wanted to name. Like it's from our old band. Like we had a song. Um, that's also still on YouTube. Um, um, and uh, there it's like it's a really cool song. But the the, the vocals are. Uh, um, you start in head voice. Yeah, I'm, I'm switching between head voice and chest voice, and it's not like common vocals. Mm. The safe bet would have been to just sing it all like a little lower in in chest voice, but that's not what the reason the vision was of the song, you know. So, but the safe bet would have been just to go uh, easy, you know, and to make it more pleasant for for the listener, you know. But we uh, um, what we uh, published that song, and people were criticizing like, oh that fucking singer, you know, uh, because it was weird. Like it was not like a thing that uh, people expected to hear at that song, you know? And then I have problems to just shut this off and just say, okay, but I have the vision that I want to pursue and I'm not changing that because le less people will like it, you know? Yeah. And you, like your your uh, way of teaching and the, your way of uh, your pro, uh, how you approach vocal lessons and stuff, that it, you shouldn't change it I because... Don't. Yeah, you, you, but if it's hard, <laughs> yeah, it you is say, hard. yeah, it, it is hard. Yeah, well, sorry, I didn't want to cut you. But, but you. What I would be interested in is, um, you were at some point forced to be part of that singer community where you yeah. had to be the person who is singing and actually showing off. You were forced yeah. to show off, so to say. I didn't um, know it. What was the reaction of those guys after they found out that that hater did that step to uh, contact your 
employee. Yeah, to that's, like that's go a, full on crazy. That's <laughs> a good question. I've gotten uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I my Facebook is now private mm. because after that, people who follow this guy were starting to leave like nasty comments on everything I post on Facebook, whether it was about singing or not. People supported him because he had a, he has this little cult, little crew of people mm. that just kind of you know believe him and everything he says, mm. and so. Uh, the the people who I knew and who knew me and the people who I were friends with said, hey, you know, this guy's out of line. You know, and I had a few people, like comrades, I guess you'd call them in the uh, in the in, in the the vocal community online. Comrades, yeah, comrades. Is that isn't that a communist term? I mean, I, 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 I don't know. know. <laughs> uh, 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 going to the colleagues, uh, colleagues, colleagues, acquaintances yeah. in the vocal community who who um who um you know said uh, like he's out of line. Like I got your back. You know, just keep doing your thing. But um, I would say that uh, the people the people who followed that guy are more about the presentation than the product, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't get a lot of support online. And that's, when it and that's at weird all. because that's something that where I think like I would have thought before like this is like a that crosses the line yeah you know like when people, people just... realize that no matter on what their opinion is one yeah. person did say to him in the midst of this conversation he said wait you you're going to this guy's job isn't that a, um it, he said isn't that a little too spicy mm. and the guy responded by saying well some hot sauce is needed in this situation that's it look um because um i want to bring this whole conversation to your point at the end you know there will never be a situation where we can get rid of all the haters and all the really fucked up and bad people but um it's really important on how a community reacts and that's okay to have harsh conversations to get emotional to say the f word to each other it can happen it can happen but there are steps that just go too far too far and we as a community no matter how different an opinion might be would say we have to say stop if something like that happens and you know that guy might be might be a bad guy but all those people who just applaud them him that's they are not any better yeah. that's the problem they're just really that's, poor that's, guys yeah. and you guys should really think about your personality because it's very bad <laughs> yeah i mean i mean i completely agree yeah. with you i think we we should we should establish a i mean it's just uh, uh dreaming basically yeah. you know but but there should be a climate but that, like i said this is not just about like that specific topic that we have like with artists and and art and and creators and stuff like that but it's also like the whole of, of uh, the whole of society is it's a problem it's it's getting worse and worse and with the internet and social media and and like we, we talked about here several times like with political debates and and people fighting each other that's why we built the, like the, the, why we formed the blossom cult we want to have this thing as a, like a like a counter movement like like not just a band like to to have a place where we can be just cool with each other even if we have different opinions and everything you know yeah. and i think this this is some uh, we should establish or um, pursue a climate where it's okay to 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 have different opinions and and different methods and different beliefs and whatever and uh and i think it's our uh challenge or a big task or a big quest is to keep our integrity like mm -hmm. keep our vision and don't leave the path because i mean it's different like to take constructive criticism and walk, work on sure. yourself it's a good thing you it's, should it's yeah, important you know absolutely. Yeah, but but just to 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 respect each other and also like people like you said like the community whatever that is like society or internet communities or whatever they should see that that if you criticize somebody even even if it's in a good way or if it's a, in a fucked up way like that crazy guy you know like people are fragile you know and especially I'm, i don't want to be like the whiny artist but especially like people who expose themselves uh, being artists and creators and stuff like that they are like they're human and they they are like stripping down also you with your with your vocal uh, uh, teachings you know in a way you know you're, you're putting yourself out there without any protection you know and it's the same like when we go on stage and sing emotional songs and it's 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 tough too i love it but it's tough yeah. and people should understand that it's easy to hurt people by by harsh criticism or just treat each other with re with respect it's like the one one love episode well let, let me let me put this is a this is a kind of augment this point give you a, my perspective on this and this this is might be controversial but i'm a big fan of the old days 
you know, in terms of music, you know. Yeah. But here's the old, old days. He yeah, means like the old days, not yeah. not the seventies, like <laughs> yeah, like, like the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Here, and here, oh, let okay. me let me explain where I'm coming from with this. I think that people have become desensitized to the effect that their feedback gives to the people that hear it. When you look at like the eighteen hundreds, seventeen hundreds, even like you know early nineteen hundreds, music was a prestigious thing. Like you go to a performance and it was like a like you. If it was a bad performance, you have times like the whole like uh, Stravinsky thing where they threw tomatoes at him or whatever. But but for the most part, it was like a like respect the performer because this is an art and the people, the audience came to it with the perspective of like this is something that demands respect. Yeah. But because everything is behind a screen now and everything is like filtered through this like image yeah. of what we see. Well, now people can just say, oh, I hate this person and they can think that hatred is all they want. And they they can easily forget that that's a, actually a human on the yeah. other side of it. Yeah. And so back then, though, you saw the humanity of the performance in front of you. Mm -hmm. You saw the struggle of the human to do this, you know. And so yeah. nowadays, because the Internet has created this barrier for people to just hate, it's it's very Orwellian. You know, like there, there's this barrier sure. that people can create. Yeah. Um, I think that now the idea of it's okay to, to just criticize people who put themselves out there all you want is it's it's acceptable it's totally yeah. fine and i think that it's dangerous yeah 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 to me maybe that's a good uh yeah some good, like but some, some good yeah. words to finish with the title of this episode is hate and we talked about a lot about the stuff that happened to you we talked a little bit of the reactions we had with uh, certain stuff we released uh, and the words are more to people who who um yeah hate people in the internet you should be self aware self awareness is a lot uh, uh, self -reflect, reflect reflection, reflection yeah. something we talk a lot about as soon as you feel hate against someone in the internet you don't even know you should ask yourself maybe you are the problem because hate is a harsh word but uh yeah we all had that situation where we knew somebody really hated yeah you, know? you can but you can feel it yeah you can feel it. Like it hurts virtual, people yeah. and it hurts you you so maybe self-reflect ask yourself is it worth to really hate somebody uh maybe you have the problem if you people, really hate somebody be kind be kind we're such a hippie Don't episode hate. like today this is we're never <laughs> like that we're always like really bad but today we are like yeah but maybe it's, it's because we, we went out uh, last night and we were like everybody's little mellow yo <laughs> it's all, all cool peace and love man uh yeah but but, yeah, but, but it's, it's true. If it's you, true. If you feel hate, you will, you will harm I'm yourself, you will harm somebody else. It's not worth it. You should ask yourself before criticizing someone else. Uh, if you hate, if you feel hate, you, you have the problem. Yeah, that's a good uh, closing statement, yeah, okay, I guess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, thank we, you, Zach, for being here. Hey, or, you, you, or there was something else that you No, we need, we need the word that you have to what? type. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, but maybe now we will have some listeners uh, who uh, don't tune in regularly, like uh, at least some of our English fr uh, English speaking friends. So we need to explain that again. Like we have like a, a what is it like a running gag thing? Like in the end of the episode, just to pr to uh, to uh, yeah, like to control if the people actually watch until the end. Everybody who watched until the end is in the club of cool people. That's already that's already really cool. Like, and bored people. And bored people, you have no life, but like, we, we don't either, so that's okay. Um, so if you watch until the end, you need to uh, type a name in, in the comments, and we always come up with uh, really stupid names, yeah. mostly German names, but now we should have like a really, what is it, like a really stupid American name? Think of a like name like... Uh, like, like Zachary. No, no. Like, like Zachary. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> but last time we had like, because our bass player is French, so he came up like with a stupid French name. Just say stupid American Like a redneck name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get political on track. <laughs> no. um, hmm. Joe Biden. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. No. Um, um, Bo Jiden. Well, Bo Jiden. I'm trying to think uh, like redneck name. Um, some that it's some name that we have a lot of names there here in Germany. Like uh, when you hear the name, you know, oh, he's uh, he's a very like special a, uh, yeah. people. It's a typical dumbass name. Chad. 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 Like Chad. the Nickelback singer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chad. Yeah, Chad. If you if you listen to the uh, episode all the way through, you have no life, but you're in the club of cool, cool people, and you should comment. Chad is Chad. Uh, Chad is an awesome name. Chad is an awesome name. Yeah. <laughs> Try that in the comment, and see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. See you. And no more hate. <laughs> okay, bye.